Ladies and gentlemen, if you're not using AI to build your business today, you're absolutely making a mistake. There are so many tools out there that if you just spend a little bit of time to get to know them a little bit and to utilize their power to help you create content for yourself and for your business, I promise you, you're going to make tremendous strides in building out your business and your brand. Recently, I've discovered a brand new tool that is quite amazing, quite honestly. Uh, it's actually a tool from Google. It's called Notebook LM, and I'll leave a, a link to that in the show notes here today. But Notebook LM uh, actually has the ability to create almost a podcast type message or content that is absolutely amazing. I was in the process of creating some some notes for myself for an episode that I wanted to create. And when I discovered this Notebook LM, I plugged in those notes into the AI and it created this dialogue between this man and a woman. And it's almost as if the podcast just created itself. It's fantastic. And so on today's episode, I want to give you or show you that what was generated. And that's what I want to encourage you today is that once you realize the power of these tools and start implementing and learn from them and use them in ways that can help build your brand, build your business, it's it's an amazing thing. So without further ado, let's dive into that episode generated by AI and Notebook LM. In order to live an extraordinary and abundant life, you must focus on your internal battle and win within. My name is Randy Wilson, and welcome to the Rich Mind Podcast. All right, ready to dive in. Today, we're tackling entrepreneurship. Ooh, exciting. Yeah. You know that whole thing about ditching the nine to five and becoming your own boss? Yeah. yeah. We're digging into a podcast transcript called From Nine to Five Grind to Entrepreneurial Freedom. Okay. It's about this guy who went from like managing a grocery store really? to CEO. Pretty wild, right? That's a big jump. He kind of ditched the whole traditional career path thing. I bet that's appealing to a lot of people. Totally. We'll uncover how he did it. Get this. The podcast host actually calls getting laid off his lucky break. Whoa, what? I know, right? <laughs> like talk about turning lemons into lemonade. You got to see the opportunity, I guess. But it makes you wonder... Was he always entrepreneurial or did that layout just like spark something? He definitely talks about always wanting more freedom, you know, uh -huh. being in control. But it seems like losing his job was the push he actually needed to go for it. It's like forced him to rethink everything. Exactly. Like, OK, now what? Another job. Or... Build something of his own. Build something of his own. <laughs> I bet that resonates with a lot of people. I mean, who hasn't daydreamed about escaping the nine to five for sure but it's scary too oh absolutely yeah and the source doesn't sugarcoat that oh, God. he talks about facing some serious fears mm. fear of failing the unknown mm -hmm. and of course you know money worries it's all very real yeah those are big ones he even says and i love this fear is a liar Ooh, i like that because it is so often it holds us back. What were some of the specific fears he dug into? Well, one big one was not having a fancy business degree. Like, would people take him seriously? Ah, oh, makes sense. And I actually started a business program, believe it or not. No way. But then he dropped out. He just quit. Yep. Decided to bet on himself, you know? Yeah. Become a self-taught entrepreneur. Wow. What did he dive into? Everything. Marketing, sales, accounting, even something he calls leverage which I found interesting. Leverage. What's that in this context? He describes it as uh, using resources and strategies to get the biggest results with less effort. Uh, like using a lever to move something heavy. Right, right. Working smarter, not harder. Exactly. Yeah. It sounds like he really wanted to build a solid foundation. Yeah. But wait, didn't he say he was a grocery store manager before all this? Yeah, that's right. How do you go from stocking shelves to CEO material? That's where that diverse skill set comes in. Ah, okay. He actually learned a lot from managing the grocery store. Operations, customer service. Huh, interesting. Even inventory management. So even those seemingly unrelated jobs, they can teach you valuable stuff. Totally. Plus, he was big on constantly learning, adapting. He even learned to build websites, create online courses, all on his own. Wow, like a DIY business degree. Exactly. But it couldn't have been easy. No way. There must have been some tough times. Oh, definitely. He talks about the ups and downs, the mistakes, all of it. But he really believes that failure is just a chance to learn and grow. 
That's a good way to look at it. Now, he also lays out what he calls a rich mind toolkit in his podcast, kind of a set of tips for aspiring entrepreneurs. Oh, cool. What are some of the big ones? Well, first, he emphasizes thinking like an entrepreneur, but he actually breaks it down. You know, what does that even mean? OK, yeah. It's more than just having a great idea, right? He talks about being open to new ideas, being OK with taking some risks mm -hmm. and putting in the work. Even when it's hard. He doesn't sugarcoat the hustle. Nope. Entrepreneurship is a journey, not a quick win. So what else is in this toolkit? Well, right after that, he talks about crafting a solid business plan. I can see why that's important, but he really digs into the why, right? Exactly. It's your roadmap. Goals, strategies, even finances. It forces you to think it all through, not just dream about it. Exactly. Like you wouldn't build a house without blueprints. True. Yeah. And this idea of a plan, it applies even beyond starting a whole company. Oh, totally. Side hustles, even just learning a new skill. Anything. All right, next tool. Become a lifelong learner. I like that. Mm -hmm. But what does that actually look like? He's basically saying the learning never stops. The business world's always changing. Got to adapt, learn new things. So it's not about getting that one degree and you're done. Nope. Stay curious, find new info, even be okay with feeling out of your depth sometimes. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. Exactly. And he has some practical tips like following industry blogs, online courses, even just talking to smart people. I love that. Be proactive. Seek out those opportunities. Right. And this whole lifelong learning thing, it's not just for entrepreneurs, really. No, it's good advice for everyone. OK, so we've got think like an entrepreneur, craft a solid business plan, become a lifelong learner. Next one might seem a little uh, unexpected. Oh, late on me. Build a financial safety net. So he's not saying just jump in with no backup. He actually thinks it's super important to have some financial stability before diving into entrepreneurship. But isn't that kind of counterintuitive? Like, aren't entrepreneurs supposed to be big risk takers? He's not saying don't take risks, just be smart about it. Having some cushion takes the pressure off, especially in the beginning when things are unpredictable. Makes sense. You don't want to be worried about making rent while you're also trying to build a business. He even suggests saving up six months to a year of living expenses first. Whoa, that's a lot. It is, but it gives you freedom to experiment, make bolder choices. Because you're not as scared of failing financially right away. Exactly. Okay, one more tool left. All right, what is it? Surround yourself with a supportive community. Ooh, I like that. Entrepreneurship can be lonely, so having those people who get it is huge. People to celebrate with, vent to. Mm-hmm. Mentors, other entrepreneurs, friends, family who believe in you. It's like your own cheer squad. NED, a brain trust. He suggests joining groups, going to events, finding mentors. All great ideas. It's easy to underestimate the power of community. This whole toolkit is packed with good stuff, and it applies beyond just starting a business, you know? Totally. It's about mindset, about how to approach any goal. Speaking of, the podcast host didn't shy away from sharing his struggles, the lessons he learned. I'm curious, what were some of the big challenges he faced? One of the toughest was self-doubt. Those moments where he wondered if he could actually do this. I think everyone feels that way sometimes. Oh, for sure. But he really emphasizes self-belief, even when things are hard. It's about silencing that inner critic, focusing on the vision. And perseverance. There were times he wanted to quit, but he kept going. Because he remembered why he started in the first place. That passion kept him going. And he stresses that failure is just part of it. It's not something to be ashamed of, more like a learning opportunity. He even shares stories about some pretty big fails he had early on. Oh, interesting. But what's cool is how we reframed them. They became valuable lessons. It's not about avoiding failure, but how you react to it. Exactly. All right. One last thing before we move on to the next part. I was struck by his whole perspective on that layoff. Yeah. How he saw it as the start of something new. It could have been easy to be negative, get stuck in the job search, but he chose to see the opportunity. It's like he flipped the script. And that seems to be a theme in his story, that ability to find the good, even when things are tough. We have a choice in how we frame things. We can see obstacles as roadblocks or as uh, chances to grow. And that choice makes all the difference. You know, we always hear about entrepreneurs taking that leap of faith, right? Yeah, like jumping off a cliff and hoping for the best. But our podcast host, he's more about 
calculated risks. Right, like planning before you jump. It makes you think about different kinds of businesses. Okay. Yeah, like no. starting a tech company, that's a huge investment up front. Totally different from, say, a freelancer working from home. Exactly. The risks are totally different. So that safety net's got to be way more important for some people than others. Especially if you have a family. Bills to pay. It's about finding that balance, you know? Being smart and taking risks. But I wonder, is there a downside to being too cautious? That's a good point. Like, could you end up just waiting forever for the perfect moment? He actually talks about that in the podcast. He does. Yeah. He says, preparing shouldn't become an excuse for never starting. Don't let the planning become the procrastination. Exactly. It's about finding that sweet spot. But how do you know when you're ready to jump? He says, ask yourself some tough questions. Like what? How much risk can you handle? What are your financial obligations? Can you go without a steady paycheck? And for how long? Those are good questions to think about. It's going to be different for everyone. Now, let's go back to his journey for a second. Yeah. You mentioned he was big on leveraging resources. Oh, yeah. What were some examples of how he did that? Well, he used a lot of free stuff online, like learning to code, marketing, right. instead of paying for expensive courses. Resourceful. He also did a lot of partnerships, collaboration, <laughs> like when he couldn't afford a web designer, mm -hmm. he teamed up with a friend who had those skills. Ah, uh, so they traded skills. Exactly. He was all about getting creative. Makes sense, especially when you're starting out and money's tight. He even used social media to build an audience, totally free. Working smarter, not harder. And leveraging isn't just about money, you know? It's about your time, skills, your network, too. Getting the most out of everything you've got. Exactly. We've talked a lot about the practical stuff, but starting a business, it's emotional too, right? Oh, yeah. Definitely a roller coaster. He talks about that, the highs and lows. And how do you stay motivated through all that? He calls it entrepreneurial resilience. I like that. Says it's just as important as any business skill. What are his tips for building that resilience? Well, he says celebrate the small wins. Okay, yeah. It's easy to get bogged down in the day-to-day, -day, forget how far you've come. So, like, give yourself a pat on the back every now and then. Exactly, and have a good support system. People who get it. Yeah, other entrepreneurs, mentors, even friends and family who are supportive. It can make a huge difference. Sharing your struggles, celebrating your wins. Helps prevent burnout, too. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He's also big on self-care. That's so important. Entrepreneurs often work too much, neglect their own well-being. You can't pour from an empty cup, as they say. He does things like meditation, exercise, being in nature. All good stuff. Helps him clear his head, stay focused. Those are great tips for anyone, really. You know, his focus on the emotional side of things is really refreshing. Yeah, it's not just about the business. It's about the lifestyle. He talks about how entrepreneurship gave him freedom, flexibility, purpose. He built a life he loves. And that makes his story relatable, you know? He's not some superhero entrepreneur. He's real. He's face challenges. We can all learn from his journey. Okay, let's talk about thinking like an entrepreneur again. Yeah, we touched on what it means, but how did he actually use it? He tells these great stories about approaching problems in a different way. Like what? Well, when he was building an audience for his online course, mm -hmm. he didn't just do the usual marketing stuff. Okay. He got creative. Give me an example. He partnered with influencers in his niche. Right. Instead of spending a ton on ads, he gave them a commission for promoting his course. Win-win. He also used storytelling, made it personal. People connect with that. Yeah, instead of just listing features, he talked about his own journey, his struggles. And more engaging. He was also all about experimenting, trying new things. And if something didn't work? He learned from it, changed his approach. That's the entrepreneurial spirit. Being adaptable, resourceful. And he says some of his biggest wins came from those moments of uncertainty. Yeah. So it's about being okay with not knowing what's going to happen. Embracing the unknown. Now, I want to talk about something that's probably on a lot of our listeners' minds. What's that? That transition from nine to five to entrepreneurship. Oh, yeah. It's a big change. He has a whole section on that in his podcast. He does. What are some of the key things he says? Well, he says you got to have a clear vision for your business. It's not enough to just hate your job. Right. Got to have a reason for why you're doing this. He also says... Be realistic. About what? About what entrepreneurship is actually like. Yeah, it's not all freedom and easy days. It's a lot of hard work, long hours. It's a grind. Especially the first few years, he says. So, got to be prepared for that. He also says, start small, 
Test your ideas. Don't just quit your job and go all in right away. Maybe launch a side hustle, a small project. Get your feet wet. He's also big on networking, building relationships. Makes sense. It's all about connections. You never know where your next opportunity will come from. So go to events, meet people. And don't be afraid to reach out to people you admire. Ask for advice. You never know what could happen. He says networking is important for anyone, not just entrepreneurs. It's about building relationships, being open to possibilities. Now, here's the question I think a lot of people are wondering. Okay, hit me. How do you know if entrepreneurship is right for you? Yeah, that's a tough one. There's no easy answer. It depends on your goals, your personality. It's different for everyone. He says, ask yourself, are you okay with risk? Are you passionate about solving problems? creating value what you think are you willing to put in the work and talk to other entrepreneurs get their perspective always good to learn from people who've been there and he says be patient success takes time it's a marathon not a sprint the most successful entrepreneurs are the ones who are resilient adaptable and learn from their mistakes so it's not about being perfect it's about learning and growing along the way so it's like entrepreneurship it can change you as a person. Yeah, totally. And that's what really stuck with me from this whole deep dive. Mm. It's not just the business stuff. It's like how you think, how you handle things, you know? Becoming more resilient. Exactly. And that's something everyone can take away from this. Even if you're not starting a business. Yeah. Self-belief, perseverance, all those things, they matter in any part of life. It's like those entrepreneurial qualities. They can help you with anything. And this podcast host, he actually lived it, you know? He didn't just talk about it. He actually did it. And achieved some pretty amazing things. It shows... It's possible. But it's not about comparing ourselves to him. Right, no. It's about taking those lessons, applying them to our own lives. Everyone's different, different goals, different paths. Right. But we can all learn from his story. Now, I want to go back to something we talked about before. Okay. How he saw that layoff as the start of something new. It's pretty amazing, right? Instead of being discouraged, he saw an opportunity. He could have just focused on finding another job. Gotten stuck in that cycle. But he chose to do something different. And that seems to be a theme with him finding the good in tough situations. It all comes down to perspective. We can choose how we see things. Obstacles can be roadblocks or they can be like stepping stones, you know? Like that saying, when life gives you lemons. Make lemonade. Exactly. Yeah. But it's more than just being positive. It's about actively looking for those opportunities. He even talks about how some of his biggest failures turned into the best lessons. So it's not about avoiding failure. It's about what you do with it. Learning, growing from it. He says failure is just part of the journey. It's not the end. It's just a step. Okay. I want to leave our listeners with something to think about. Right. We talked about building a financial safety net, right? Yeah. But also about taking risks, stepping outside your comfort zone. Those two things, they seem kind of opposite. So how do you balance them? How do you know when you're ready to take that leap? That's the big question, isn't it? And there's probably no one right answer. It's different for everyone. But this whole deep dive, it's shown us that it's about finding that balance. Being smart, but also being brave. Planning, but also trusting your gut. And knowing that there will be challenges, but you can handle them. It's all part of the journey. And maybe that's the biggest takeaway from all this. Yeah. It's not just about building a business. It's about building a life you love. A life that's resilient, fulfilling. Embracing the adventure, learning along the way. Never giving up on your dreams. Exactly. So to everyone listening, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep that entrepreneurial spirit alive. No matter what you're doing. Whether it's starting a business or just trying to live a better life. The journey matters just as much as the destination. And hey, maybe one day we'll be talking about your story right here on The Deep Dive. That would be awesome. Until then, happy exploring. Thank you for joining me on the Rich Mind Podcast. And remember, your external world is a reflection of what's going on inside of you. So focus every day on that internal battle and win within. Until next time, my friends.